Welcome to another Disguidance segment with the two MK team. Today we are, as promised, looking at even more bots and the changes that they have undergone with their new V skills. We spent a little time deciding exactly which bots to use for this one, and we decided to go with the ones that are most likely to be used because of the characters being familiar or more popular. Not everything in this list is quite that, but we're starting with those in the stream as well, meaning that you'll see those characters first and the rarer characters as we go further down. Akuma is our starting point, and we would have done this one with a different timing, but I think we mentioned before somewhere that Amara's account has the modified Akuma bot. Whereas this one is straight up the original. Basically, Akuma bot doesn't really use its V skill <coughs> for pretty much anything. This barely matters as the V skill, while it does have a different type of purpose, isn't really the sort of thing you need to train against Akuma specifically for. <laughs> Since there is basically no effect because of the fact that he doesn't use it, there's nothing to worry about in terms of changes. However, Akuma has received a few changes to his character in terms of small changes to frame data and effectiveness for certain things. In fact, one of the most important things being that he can no longer cancel his trigger out of an empty projectile, which does in fact affect our bot a little bit, but not enough that you probably care. As you can see, his timing for that is actually based on the other projectile's timing, so all it does really is cause the bot to do it slightly less, which can be good sometimes. Understanding how to deal with this character hasn't really changed too much as a result of minor things in his moves, in fact most of the time, when a character gets such small tweaks, the thing you're aiming for is to just keep doing what you were always doing and have it work out a little better. We have, on a different set of streams like this one, looked at what happens when he uses his V trigger 2 but the effect is usually small and we don't tend to care. Therefore there just isn't that much to add to Akuma based on this, and given the specifics of the V skill, it's not really something you'd spend a lot of time teaching a bot to do, or <clears throat> something that tends to lead to the player having new setups at a high enough level that you care about it. Therefore, let's move on to our next semi-boss character. One that you're much, much more likely to see and have reason to worry about. Bison, aka Vega, best known as Dictator. This bot is a highly matchup related bot, and that does not change when this particular V trigger appears. Far less the V skill change. Oh, 
<laughs> but in this case, we will use both of them, even though technically it's a little more frustrating or confusing when he uses V Trigger 1 with his new V skill. This is the largest departure we can have from the normal state, and therefore the most important one to learn about. This bot is almost entirely about making sure that you don't have any problems with his moves. We had that backward this time. Generally giving him too much <coughs> CA gauge tends to be a problem. The bot does do that often enough that you have to think about it and it's going to become a problem, but it's not the hardest move to learn to visually distinguish. After a while, you start to recognize, <coughs> not necessarily that he is really obvious, but that he moves backward in order to do the hell work. And if you learn to recognize that, it gets easy. If you've trained yourself to look for only the purple flash, it's going to get a little harder, but you can definitely figure it out after a bit. Before, obviously, him just doing a parry in neutral didn't really have too much effect. Now that he just does this in neutral, obviously you can use it for training, but after a while it's still not going to be that hard to deal with for most characters. He is plus after this move though. The bot does not do a good job of demonstrating this, but he is advantaged enough that you want to avoid it if you can, or counter it, even. And while it does not look that way, because obviously he's going for a strike, this is actually a fairly counterable move by many standards. Finding your own particular way to do so is probably the most important part of it, but lots of characters have lots of options. The difficulty is, as usual, in executing those options versus a cross-up style attack. But that was Bison from the beginning. You had to deal with that <laughs> from day one. Now you just have a bit more of it. Fortunately, he does not do this move often enough that you have to worry about it constantly. But you can see that when you first start off against it, your instinct will be to try to counterattack after blocking it, which you generally won't get away with, so you're going to have to learn to do something else or to prevent the moves full effect before we even get that far. You can in fact dash away from this strike with most characters, but the timing for that is even harder. Doing all that while focused on preventing the actual thing you're supposed to avoid, specifically the dash up throw, can be difficult primarily because of how seldom he does it. <coughs> A generally well input bot just doesn't abuse the move enough for you to immediately learn to do it. You do get to deal with all of the stress of being confused by a character doing this. But once you've landed your first hit on him, <clears throat> especially if you didn't need a command normal, you start to recognize fairly easily that he can just be hit out of this move. Your main issue will always be your speed 
and learning to not press the button until a certain point in this animation. Which is a huge, huge requirement. Because when one sees a character vanish from screen, knowing that they're coming to attack you, most of us don't have the immediate response of, okay, let me hit you while you're reappearing. Especially not on a character that will beat us up for doing that at other times. That said, overall this still works out and your main stress will actually go the other way. So let's briefly change him to his trigger one. And we can look at what additional stresses pop up as a result of that. Fortunately, this move does have a general <coughs> easy to beat thing that does not change in this V-Trigger, so it's not really as if the V-Trigger itself is the problem. As far as we can tell, the move does not become any more powerful, it does not become any more tricky, it's that the whole character becomes more tricky, and therefore you don't have to worry about it. This mostly has comes down to how good you are at recognizing different things happening on your opponent's character. And of course having to deal with the fact that when he is in V-Trigger 1, he also can do his regular dash and still end up doing the cross-up. This is not necessarily the way we suggest training against this bot, it doesn't really matter too much if you do one or the other. It's just notable that if you want the maximum amount of strain on your ability to recognize things, the skill 2 plus B trigger 1 is probably as high as that gets. But now that we've gotten to this point, <coughs> we are reminded that there are quite a few other characters in this game that are good at side switches. And the situations under which they're good at these side switches can be a real problem. So let's look at two of those characters, back to back. Specifically, we're first going to look at Poison Bot. This bot is almost entirely based around you learning to punish his specific V skill. The other things she does are problematic, but the way in which they're problematic shifted a long time ago. The player doesn't have worry about things that Poison does if she just never opens them up because they just always block. Eventually they'll lose just by taking too much chip damage or something, but if you get a good life lead and understand how to stay calm in the situation, you're not necessarily having to worry about things that Poison is doing. Her new V skill means that at least at certain ranges, you have to worry about things Poison is doing. Not because she's really specifically undefeatable or particularly difficult to deal with at that level, but that the speed you require to do it can be a bit much sometimes. The new V skill is not something you see a whole lot of. And depending on how the bot was input, 
you will see different versions of it. This one's a little bit easier to understand, though. You can see here that the thing you are reacting to is basically her getting to the other side. But she also has some attacks out of it. And you have to react to those too. Most importantly, depending on how you interact with her when she is going past you, you don't necessarily know which side she's on even if you landed the hit. So while this is much more dangerous for poison if playing against someone who wants the zone, it's not necessarily easy enough to deal with it overall when you can just get away with things. You can stop her, you can hit her out of whatever attack is going to follow that up, and depending on your speed you can just react altogether, but she can at least block Meaning that a lot of the time, you're going to need to use something like your standing medium punch or similar to make sure you have enough advantage if you should not manage more than that. And that's where the problem comes in. This is actually hard to do in time if she does the attack part. But as you've just seen, not impossible. The problem is of course being on guard enough and ready for it all the time. And of course, knowing the range when you can stop her simply because she's not going to cross past you. This is a character that absolutely benefits from you getting twitchy about a thing she can do, and in any way becoming frustrated by the fact that she can do it. Meaning that if you can't control either your approach, your temper, or just your speed required to do the things, you're likely to be both frustrated by the player and frustrated by the character, which is a bad combination. Normally they feel like the same thing to most people, but honestly most games don't tend to frustrate you both by the character and the player. But Poison is a character built to be frustrating in the hands of good players based purely on the playing aspect, whereas now she doesn't have to be played by a very good player to be frustrating. And the reason why that's important is because many of us, when we first go into a match against a character that is frustrating when played well, we don't necessarily assume that the character is going to be played well enough by our latest quote unquote random opponent to have to be stressed about it. You've known that feeling to go up against a character and go, well, yes, this character is annoying, but only when a really good player is actually playing them, otherwise they're just kind of lame. Honda and Yurian, for example, are characters a lot like that, or used to be a lot like that. Even if someone learned all the Yurian setups, and you did have to worry about them doing massive damage to you when they had Aegis ready, they still weren't necessarily going to overwhelm you in neutral or with their incredible play, and it was not an expectation that came up. A lot of what Yurian does requires enough understanding and skill of planning that you don't necessarily consider him a frustrating character until you get to higher levels in the game. Poison is now able to be frustrating at many levels of the game using this particular V-Skill. So you may need to put some effort into practicing this. <clears throat> she also has enough other ways to cause trouble even if you were to try to pick up on the pattern the player uses, just by causing you to react to that move, they would be able to change your entire game plan. Meaning you couldn't afford to let that happen too much. <clears throat>
overall the bot hasn't lost out that much based on the shifts that come from that move being in it. Even though the timing does change a little bit, the overall flow of the bot stays the same more or less. You should think of this move also as a way for Poison to whiff punish or annoy players who try to keep her out using their own long runs. I expect to see this as one of the stronger options in the matchup, or rather in the mirror match, or Poison vs. Dalsin. Since this move is one where she can be hit, it's not exactly an overwhelming thing if you can reach her, but depending on the height of your attack, it still becomes difficult enough and involves throwing out normals enough yourself that she gets to do certain things. There's not a whole lot to learn from this, other than react to this move. We do have a bit more learning to do though, if we go to the other side. Ibuki Bot has some more changes in general, and we have mentioned that Ibuki's V skill doesn't really do anything. Her V-Skill 2 is one of those things where you really are thinking of it on the ninja level for a while before it starts to have any effect on a match. But that does not mean that it does absolutely nothing, so we do need to look at it. And for the sake of simplicity, we will let her use the Fuma Shuriken in this case because we do have some changes to that move as well that are important enough to look about, look into it. So once again, Ibuki is largely about side switches, playing very specific types of footsies, and learning how to punish certain moves at close range. Depending on how you input the Ibuki bot, she just doesn't do her B skill. It was always a very important move, but the way that the bot would have used it if we had put it in the spot we intended would have not have made it as effective. So, much like the next character we're going to look at, she basically just doesn't use it. It can be input though. Unfortunately, since the move is really not that relevant to basically anything at this time, at least not at the level where we could set up a bot to even do it and be effective, it's unlikely to matter that she does not do it. This is of course just a good way to remind you though that the bot is going to function about the same as always because there is little or no way for it to change other than the fact that the shuriken is now a different timing when cancelled. Other changes to the character really don't affect the bot work very much and therefore you should spend most of your time fighting relatively normally. In terms of other characters that are likely to be popular 
because we're moving to Kami next. Not right away, but we are. Characters that are likely to be popular in the Grappler section will be grouped together into one stream for various reasons. Mainly because the work you do against Grappler bots is very kata related and matchup related. So unless something has seriously, seriously changed, and mostly it has not, we already took a look at Lara. We're going to take a look at Lara again, but it's more or less the same. The way that a grappler plays is very seldom changed heavily by their V-skill. Because unless their V-skill involves literally another command grab, they already got most of their mix-ups and confusions from the command grab capability. There will definitely be people who spend some time trying to come up with the perfect setups for either Lara's new hop or Ibuki's Makibishi, but we don't expect a ton of first order strategies to be popping out left and right. Unfortunately, are mostly unaffected Ibuki. Can continue to be used in the way she always has been. Meaning we can just move on to Kami. We've done a lot of testing and have multiple Kami bots around the place. We may in fact take a look at more than one of them, but we specifically were aiming to make sure that whenever we did look at one, it was at least one with a little bit of a shimmy involved. Because our Kami bot can come in different forms, Basically, as it you upgrade and get better at it, we did make sure that that can be done that way. It does not matter which V trigger I choose because, unless you've modified your Kami bot, she doesn't use her V trigger at all. But her V skill is actually a relatively heavy part of what she does in the clothes. The best we can figure that this attack was meant to be used for is a way to do something similar to Guile's upside down kick to avoid a certain part of or aspect of footsies and make life easier for the player to set up their stuff. Your main aim against Kami is to tack her throws. But she doesn't have to throw you in her, let's call it, second form. She can instead properly make a mix up when she walks forward of if she's going to throw you, shimmy, or not. Since that attack goes backwards, it's not one you're going to see getting a lot of action in this form of it regardless. Mainly because she walks backwards before using the actual attack. It's very unlikely that unless you were moving forward yourself, that your character is going to get hit by this basically ever. However, there is a timing in which it can happen, specifically when you either drop your combo or just try to do certain things in neutral that involve advancing, and she avoids you altogether because of it. Yeah. 
understanding this is key to understanding why we would have ever cared about how the bot was built, but this has a lot to do with something else. Even if your character has a long crouching move they could use, they're likely to miss. And if she gets close enough, this move is slightly more dangerous than her spin knuckle. Very slight. Because the interaction between this and most other people's buttons means that you don't get much. Let's instead here try therefore to punch her when she's walking backwards instead of just filling up space in front. Actually has a very very long range stand heavy punch so it should be easy to see what happens after a bit anyway. You can see that overall her rhythm is unchanged, which is fine, and you just don't expect to see this move land very often. For certain characters this is going to be a much bigger deal than for others. Also the timing for how much walk back there was is going to affect one bit more. But there's a good example and the fact that the move does crush counter means that she can build up more meter faster for all of her other thing cami things. One type of character this is about to affect a lot are the ones who don't use lows necessarily when opponent stands close to them. They want to get control more so through a frame tap or other timing. And the walk back has always helped the Kami bot to basically block her way through that situation. Depending on the timing therefore, the crouching medium kick or whatever else you use may get blocked for a moment or may be avoided by the same random question. There we go. That's the sort of thing we were expecting to see. It's not really that important that a bot do it, but it's still interesting and useful to understand that it's possible. The move whiff punishes a lot of things if you stick buttons into Kami's face and she happens to be using it or intended to use it precisely for that setup, you tend to get hit. Depending on the button it's not really that different though. For some people, the spin knuckle still avoided some of their lows and went around a lot of their other buttons. Overall, because of Kami's timing, she's likely to do mostly the same things as before, and if there was going to be any sort of shimmy or use of this move relative to that, it'd be this anyway. One thing it does interestingly help with is that it tends to reposition her backward instead of that constant forward movement that you get when she has the trigger one. She eventually comes forward in one of her methods and the game ends up being a lot more close range as a consistent thing. With that gone, you get to experience a different concept of Kami for a bit. But overall, not a huge change, and unless you have a lot of long range moves that are intended to handle her, it's not likely to affect the cannon bot flow too much. But therefore, let's reverse that a little bit and move to Chun-Li.
This is another one of our bots that is relatively heavily affected. She has been relatively heavily affected since the beginning of this sort of thing. Basically from the first time that we found ourselves with a change to a bot. Of any type. She was one of the first to have that sort of problem. Because they change how certain of her moves work every now and again. And the bot is usually out of date because it's so difficult to put the precise timings into the bot that the amount of development it would take to normalize it is a little too high overall. That said, this is a much bigger change than usual. So let's look into what happens with it. Generally, she should be coded to very seldom actually use the V skill under normal circumstances. There is also the consideration that if you are planning to use her V trigger to, you might want to give her somewhat less meter to do it with. But since most of us are just good at blocking as Anjuan is mostly a move meant to help her get around zoning characters, it causes more of an effect on her rhythm than anything else. That would probably be one of the biggest effects it has. It can cause a change based on not wanting to react to a specific thing she's doing at the time that is most likely to happen. Because you're used to having to find your way forward against characters like this. He specifically noted at one point that while this bot is not strictly speaking dangerous in the fact that she's going to open you up, all of her moves, if you do block them and don't actually punish them correctly, or are misspaced making it nearly impossible to punish them correctly, it's a bot. You don't have the benefit of doing a ton of damage yourself and having that be your victory condition. Namely, she will eventually just chip you to death with all of the chip damage she does from all of her kicks. So you're on a timer basically no matter what you do. She only does the things required to get you points every so often, and she's constantly chipping away at you until then. You can make this situation easier on yourself by being able to react to her dashes, but it's a 15 frame dash. Understanding how to deal with a 15 frame dash is not high on most people's priority list. Especially from a character that has so many other ways of moving, you can't be absolutely sure she's dashing when she goes into the first part of her dash animation either. Meaning that you have to spend a lot more time reading the mindset of the player using her. And that is why high level children players get away with so much. Basically this character gets punished for dashing a lot less than you'd expect. It's not just the speed, she is ambiguous enough about it that you do have to deal with this as a serious problem. But as you can see, the timing for the Hazanshu is such that she does not do it that often, nor is she likely to, even if you've input the bot in a less than optimal way. Hey 
since the purpose of our shooting bot is more so causing you to try everything you know how to do, especially quick reactions to things to protect yourself, that's actually just adds one more layer of being pushed to be twitchy and then having something happen that makes you feel as if you should react. Most of the time, for most characters, the Hazanshu will hit if you twitch anyway. And you have to deal with it. As you can see, one of the main points of the bot ever was the fact that if she does, the EX move or a kick from the right spacing, just having a basic reaction is not going to be enough because you will often drop your combos on a lot of characters. Characters that have, even a couple that have dash up crush counter style things that basically your crush counter is followed by a dash up combo. Depending on where she was in the animation, sometimes even this becomes difficult to confirm the full combo. Not for everyone, but there are definitely a few characters where this becomes a problem. So you can definitely see here, there's a lot of I should twitch, because if I don't twitch, I'm eventually going to lose due to just blocking forever. But the Hazanshu doesn't help any more than the Rankyaku helps in terms of the positioning. It gets her closer to you and if you are ready enough for it, then things just don't get better for you. Well for her. Since most of your aim in this matchup should be about recognizing and reacting to things, adding one more thing to the stack is probably not overwhelming for most people and the people who find it overwhelming may just benefit from doing so. A better way to decide it then would be how good are you at being calm while you are facing a character who forces twitchiness. If you feel as if you have that down, then there's very little point. But there's still at least something to learn and her rhythm is not terribly broken by it. Mostly because people would just punish the other version anyway. She does lose her head stomps, but those were more so in there as an incidental form of good luck from the way that the bot was designed than because it was necessary for anyone. A few characters cared a little bit. Majority of So now we're getting into the part where we are looking at characters who are much less popular. But you may still care about enough to take a look at. We're also going to drift toward those that are a bit more zoned. So we're looking at Manat first. And we're going to be obnoxious to do that on Lair of the 14th stage because that's how we practice Manat. After all, what fun is it really if you can see things she's doing? Minat's original V skill is good for combos and sometimes being annoying, but doesn't really change that much of a matchup. Her new one is not particularly great about that either. A better way to put it would be that Minat doesn't specifically benefit from this move 
and it doesn't really come off as a move that would be chosen for a V skill in most matchups. But I'll let you be the judge of it. It moves her forward a lot more than she normally does move though, which can be important and somewhat interesting. Honestly, I really feel as if this was just there to make the Rose fans happier. Therefore, as much that she does changed, no, because the timing she used to use the old V skill were basically in a spot that we wanted it to exist, but not particularly meaningful. And Soul Spiral in that space doesn't really change much. It's not good particularly, it's not bad particularly. It's just a move. You can consider it an interesting way to play footsies against characters that don't stick their buttons into their space, but even that doesn't have that big a meaning. More so the sort of thing that is good for certain types of good punishes, or dealing with people who want to jump toward her at a very specific height and spacing. That said, no harm in turning it on, just enough to learn how to punish the move with Eevee. The body is not generally too negatively affected, And it doesn't really stop any of her systems from operating correctly. If anything, it very slightly increases one of them, but it's hard to say it might just be the way that we end up playing against her. This is more the sort of thing you would have to consult a player who uses a lot of zoning characters about and find out from them if they have specifically ever had trouble with Manat reflecting too many of their natural rhythm. The projectiles they use as part of their natural rhythm. But if that was a real problem at any point, then sure, you can say that it was reducing the experience of that player or that type of player. But for the rest of us who don't really do that so much, it's not really appearing to be a loss. She acts more or less the same, and is but just about as troublesome as ever. But you do get that moment where you're trying to get into her space, and she does have the option of advancing with her strikes and getting the knockdown instead of having to use the orbs, which generally don't need the knockdowns. That therefore is probably the biggest effect offered to Manat by having this move, that it is a knockdown that she can add to her arsenal. Depending on the spacing, the can become a little difficult to punish for some characters, but overall, it's not very hard. You should not need to practice too long against her doing it to decide what your optimal punishes are. It's probably going to be more than one, but still, not that much work. as you always have. Let us know if you have a version of Manatbot that has been input in a way where it causes much more of a problem. But for now, we're moving on again to Boxer.
Balrog to some and Bison to others. Our work with this character has almost always been around doing specific things in neutral. Now we have taken a look at this character before, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on him now. But we felt it was important to put him in here because the last time we did it, we were specifically saying this effect isn't really meaningful. And we spent a lot of time putting him on his V-Trigger 2. Today we're going to specifically look at what happens when he is on his V-Trigger 1. Because the effect it has is meaningful enough that we wanted to look at it a little bit separately. You must aim for the highest level. We do have two versions of this bot, but we will not be looking at it on a different stream even though, because it doesn't really come out that often. The reason why it's so much more important when he is on this particular setup is because he will push more into your space much faster and enable himself to get out of certain things. You can of course learn to react and because he has less mix-ups, you're likely to get away with it more. But if you're the sort of person who blocks their way through the whole thing, and the opponent can frustrate you enough, it becomes a lot easier to use that sway to get something to happen because you try to react to it, or because he's simply moving forward and in your space, meaning that you get many more situations in which you're whiffing buttons at him after he has come in too close. Therefore, it's up to you to judge how important this is. Ash displayed just now, learning to react to his closeness and hearing that with a throw can be helpful, but it can be also spaced in such a way that you try to throw him and it doesn't really come out in your favor as much. Being quote unquote encouraged to leave this character alone and be put on edge by the fact that sometimes he'll loop it, sometimes he won't, is extremely important. But as noted, this doesn't really stop you from being able to achieve the bot points, and nor does it cause it to become a issue of luck, because the way the attacks work alongside it doesn't really leave you much. You can still do all of the things you normally do, and get your points in the usual ways. That's one of your primary moments, when you want to get more than just a throw punish, but your good punish starter is something that you will manage to get away from. 
In a way, therefore, this is a way to get some defensive flow out of the V skill. The reason why this is important is because at higher levels, as it becomes less and less likely that characters are going that players are going to be caught off guard by this character's mix-ups, he ends up primarily relying on corner carry. But even the corner carry doesn't necessarily work depending on what moves the opponent chooses to use. This isn't necessarily as big a deal for characters like Ken who keep on attacking with their invincible moves for a while, making it nearly impossible to be useful, but Ryu and similar characters who just do one attack that they were really expected to work can be shut down by this somewhat more than you'd expect. Most importantly though, remember that dealing with this character was almost all about hit confirms. You're trying to get to a specific spot and land an attack, and then confirm that it was a good one. Sometimes he'll give you extra chances for it, and sometimes you'll really regret it in different ways. That said, if you practice long enough, it's no longer really a matter of hit confirms, and you just end up with punishing things like this. But, given the overall flow, he's not terribly affected either way. If he was going to be using the skill before, it's all for our fight. The V skill does seem to have some effect on his crazy rush. But really, even if we spent a lot of time looking at what they were and paying a lot of attention, it wouldn't necessarily change the fact that the bot will flow this way. So feel free to experiment with it yourself. If you consider it important that you not spend time in this or staying quiet or opening himself up this way, then yes, just please make sure you will use only the skill 1 for this boss. If you find a lot of specifics about how this ability can be used better by high level players, we'll try to integrate it and if it's in not possible to just integrate it, you might in fact get a boxer bot to point oh. But with all that said, let's move on to our last and technically actually least bot for the evening. It's been a long time since we've had any reason to show off Nakalibot 1, the simplest version of our Nakalibot, meant to help people get into the game and learn how to ant here. This bot does, however, use the V skill, and does so in scenarios where it is obvious enough you have to care a little bit. Underground Arena. Arena Kanzuki. Now, Nikali's V skill 2 Nikali. is not exactly the most Three, overwhelming two. or terrifying thing by most standards. 
I'm sure there will be lots of setups for this. And I'm sure that if we do see those setups in a way that matters, it's almost certainly going to be from Nikali Bot 2. But, as promised, <coughs> we look at all of them to make sure they're working, simply because everyone needs to know. You don't want to be showing beginners or trying to help them with anything and then the bot just not do what you expect at all anymore. The way this is, should work is that the only thing Akali Bot's V skills do in this version is show you that he has them, <clears throat> more or less. Kali bot 1 and 2 is so subtle under most circumstances that we don't think about it too much. But as you can see, there's very little effect. And I've possibly been saying which the wrong time in a Kali bot this whole time. But you can see from what it does, which one it is, probably. And that the effect is there, but not terribly meaningful in most places. So, rather than think about it too long, Let's just go with the fact that we have two more such sessions to do, covering the more obscure characters and the graphics. You can see a little bit of Nakali's functionality in this way. Especially when he jumps after doing that at a certain space on the screen. But that's about all you're going to see. Fortunately, the V skill is actually technically approximately as effective at the same point on the screen, meaning that the boss rhythm hasn't been terribly changed. We'll continue to use it in the way you always have. And hopefully, it will continue to help you build up your skills. For tonight, at least, we've come to the end of this bot checker. You can find all of the bots we've discussed at our website 2 nkorg and you can get information on streams, the next bot checker, and so on, on our Twitter 2 underscore mk. Underscore enemies. This has been really in long with Kansky Dynasty. Fourteen to MT. Good luck with your training and good night everyone.